Kenny Bueller, Luis Scott Vargas, we are ready for match number two of the Standard Super League Finals. Guys are ready. Let's get down to the action. Josh utter Layton has taken a 1-0 lead. His Jess Sky deck. I don't know if I can get behind Jess Sky. I think just Jess Guy. It, Maybe you can talk to you, me. You can say it the same way, just as long as you spell it differently. <laughs> I spell it with an S-K-Y for the Flyers? All right. I, I can get behind that. Jess Guy did win the first game. Owen's Obzon deck did not uh, did, didn't deliver up spells. Now here in match number two, it's Green Red against Green Red. Um, they're not both Devotion decks, though, right? Uh, Owen's is actually a Dragon deck, if I'm not mistaken. It, it is, but Owen's draw of Rattleclaw and Xena goes into Tarka. He could masquerade <laughs> his Devotion for some amount of the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's a Haven, not a Nick, though. So, Haven will give the give the gig up, probably. That is true, though. Uh, yeah, the devotion deck can't run, afford to run Haven, but Josh is on the play here and has textbook draw. Just turn two carrier tip, turn three Pelucranos, turn four Whisperwood. All right, players can start as soon as they're ready. <sighs> All Josh needs to find is an untapped land. Ooh, Courser of Crufix. That's actually kind of interesting because hmm. clearly Courser's a great card, but do you want that or do you want a guaranteed untapped land? It looks like Josh just kept the Courser. Also, you don't know what you're playing against. Yeah. And if you push Courser to the bottom and then you play against a removal heavy deck, like what if Owen was playing, I don't know, blue-white control or something like that, I could see you wanting extra gas, and Courser is among the better spells you can choose. Owen drew land land, so now he is going to get to to play Xenagos here. So Josh is just going for value. He's just playing the yeah. Corsair, not playing Pelucranos. Makes sense. So he's Whisperwood on the top of his library. Yeah. He'll be shuffling land. that away, I, I'm sure. <laughs> you don't want Whisperwood when you're on four lands? No, I think you'd rather just take a, basically a two you know two look two extra looks at finding a land here. Yeah. No, totally agree. Yeah. yeah, so it's Josh's Courser, which has revealed the Whisperwood Elemental. We'll try to get that moved up by Josh's library so it's not confusing. And yeah, Josh's Wooded Foothills means he can shuffle that away for his next draw phase. Oh, I'm going to drop Planeswalker, make a 2-2, two -two, and then I guess you can actually just let Courser hit your Xenogos if you want. And then next turn you can make another 2-2 two -two and have double blocks up. So do they know each other's decks at this point, do you think? Haven is is definitely a giveaway. Josh's deck has revealed more. He's played, you know, Carry to Whisperwood Elemental. It looks pretty in Courser. It looks very devotion-y. Owen is looking like... He wouldn't be looking like devotion except for, again, the Haven. That just, devotion decks just don't play Haven. They don't play enough dragons, and they need all their green sources. So I would expect both players to be reasonably confident about knowing what they're facing. So Owen is gearing up to play an Atarka on turn four here, which wow. that is the kind of draw that lets you win. That's what the Devotion deck's supposed to do. They're so much more likely to do that, but Owen's going to you know turn turn the tables and slam it here. Josh has... he Okay, he's going to crack up. Keep. Here we go. Draw Rattleclaw. And see an Elvish Mystic, so not working out for him. Mm -mm. Now how does, he, how does he play this turn? Does he just need a Rattleclaw so they can get up to bigger... to the... Bigger creatures, or do you drop Pelucranos here? I kind of like dropping Pelucranos. You still get to take a look at to finding a land the next turn once you draw the Elvish Mystic. And against a Xenoghost, I'd rather just play Pelucranos. If you miss, you don't get to play uh, Whisper, but you still have Pelucranos in play. Mm -hmm. And if you hit on a land the next turn, you get to play both, which is a much better reward. There's Pelucranos. Flame Draws Rabble Master. That's a card that may not get cast at all this match because Owen's not going to likely cast it this game if he wins the game pretty quickly with Atarka, and I would expect it to get sideboard out if Owen has good things to bring in. Alright, Xenagos' plus ability makes a couple of mana. Four lands, two from Xenagos, Rattleclaw Mystic, that's seven. That is Dragonlord Atarka mana. Yeah, time to toast Down Pelucranos. Down goes Pelucranos. I think Owen's going to be up a game fairly soon here. Is there any thought to killing a Corsair there instead of Pelucranos? Nah, not really. Like, even though, yeah, Josh gets to play another land here, 
I think things go wrong if you let Pelucanus live and Josh strings together some like strange Nykthos play or something like that. Yeah. I wonder if Josh is reconsidering whether Owen is devotion or dragons. You still have to think dragons, but he, every card but one has, he, has, he's played is definitely a devotion card, though they all fit in dragons too. So I think Haven's enough of a tiebreaker, but it is kind of interesting. Yeah, agreed. Ooh, Josh has an Atark on top. That's one of the cards that could maybe get him out of this. He just plays some mana creatures. Owen presumably is going to Draconic Roar the Rattleclaw. I guess Owen is actually going to cast the, the, the Rabble Master because he's got nothing better to do. But <laughs> if you Draconic Roar... If if Josh hits a land on the top of his deck after the Atarka, then uh, he still gets to cast his own Atarka. Interesting. At that point, we have an Atarka off, and Josh has slightly bigger cards. And you know, Josh might actually have a second turn now. The 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 the. I guess the Draconic War dealing three puts Josh to seventeen. Atarka hits him down to nine. Presumably, Josh takes a little bit of damage this turn off Satyrs plus Goblin tokens, or potentially at least. So you know, we could see, we could see. Uh, Josh getting two extra turns, and I think he's only going to get one, most likely. What is Owen thinking about? Well, Owen could go Rabble Master, make a Seder token just attack with everything, and then kill the Corsair with Draconic War. The problem is, if you think that's a Rattleclaw Mystic face down on Josh's side, you're just letting him cast a Tarka, and that doesn't seem great. So... It's mostly whether you want to play Rabble Master and just suicide in, like your your own Rattleclaw Mystic even into uh, into the Corsair over there, just so you can attack with the Goblin Token and the two two. That gets only extra one. You're throwing away a Rabble or a, a Rattleclaw Mystic for one damage and keeping a Goblin Token. That's not that bad. His other line is to just Draconic Roll or the Morph and attack in the air. Yeah. And by doing that, he also, I guess he could also, instead of playing the Rabble Master, play another Rattleclaw and a Carry Tater, or even a Face Down Rattleclaw. Well, actually, there's two Seder Tokens. So I actually like making a Seder Token, going Mana Confluence, make Rabble Master, make Seder Token, just attack with everything. This puts Josh on a one-turn clock, and you you end up losing a Rattleclaw, but I think that's okay, because you end up getting... Extra damage through. Josh isn't going to trade his Elvish Mystic away here. Looks like Owen does not want to play, play Rabble Master, though. And he's just going yeah, to attend himself. Oh, Owen doesn't know that Josh won't block, necessarily. I mean, the Mystic for Rattleclaw trade looks kind of bad to Owen, I would think. No, right? I don't... Because Seder to the Corsair, you lose a Rattleclaw to the Mystic. thing is, you're overjoyed to trade Rattleclaw for Mystic, because now if Josh hits on top land, he gets to play Atarka. Yeah, and I guess you can see the Atarka. Okay. Well, he played it with just the flyer attacking. And a Nykthos, so how does that change things? So <laughs> now Josh gets to... Can he play Corsair? Nykthos activate a profit. Yeah, he can He can play Corsair and then activate Nykthos and cast... Uh, and cast a Tarka. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Yeah, he has exactly enough to do that. And then a Tarka can eat the Morph and the... And the Xenagos and the Rattleclaw Mystic, and then, he, hmm. you know, Josh might actually survive a turn four Atarka here, which is kind of insane. Hitting Nykthos was obviously just completely perfect. So, and you don't know what the morph is, but it's just going to be better than the, the Wayfinder, regardless. And obviously, you're kill killing the Planeswalker. And then at that point, you might as well pick up the Rattleclaw for free. Now Josh is at 11. The Dragons trade. The Corsairs keep the Satyrs back. And then Josh gets to slam Whisperwood, followed by Genocide, or potentially the same turn because of Nykthos. Yeah, that Nykthos basically swung this game. Wow, Josh has gotten incredibly lucky this game. Owen can even... Even if Owen trades the Tarkas and has Haven, he's not... I guess he's only one mana away from recasting a Tarka, but he lost his Rattleclaw, both of his Rattleclaws and his Xenagos. So now he gets to, like... 
Trade Atarkas, play Carrington to land, and set up next turn casting Atarka. I assume Josh is blocking here, even with the Haven in play. Yeah, he can't take can't take the damage. No way. So now Josh is a mana short of playing his own Atarka, but let's see, Josh can I was a mana uh, short of yeah. playing Atarka anyway, right? Own yeah, Owen gets yeah, he gets back, he has to sack Haven to get it back and his six mana there. Right. So he's the top of his deck, delivers a land up, then this all works. But otherwise So you get to So you can play Whisperwood and Genesis Hydra for six here. It sounds pretty appealing. Six? You don't want the seventh? <laughs> uh, so let's see I mean Ultra if you could play Whisperwood and Hydra for 6 that just means you could Hydra for more right and not play the Whisperwood Al alternately you could play you could play Hydra for 9 I think having a Whisperwood out is a, is a little bit better though I guess what is that what is the the, the biggest difference is you can't hit Hornet Queen or a Tarka let me take a look at right. Josh's deck he's got Two Atarkas and two Hornet Queens left. So he's cutting himself off of three things. I think Whisperwood plus a Manifest is probably better than that extra odds. So should, at six, you're still pretty good shape to hit something. It looks like Josh is just going to Manifest and just cast it for a million next turn. Mm, okay. I guess given that you think there's an Atarka coming back, or at least you have a shot of it, that makes right. sense too. Yeah, Haven gets the Atarka. Owen does draw the land, so he can, in fact, replay this Atarka. Is that good enough? Well, it kills, like... <laughs> it can kill a Whisperwood and a Mystic, and then Josh gets an extra Manifest because he sacks the Whisperwood. It can also kill a Corsair and a Mystic, in which case Josh could trade Whisperwood for two, but I think... Yeah, it looks like Josh is he's just going to kill the Whisperwood. He's not even going to go after a Mystic because <laughs> he doesn't want Josh to Manifest extra. Doesn't want him to upgrade the Mystic into a Manifest? A manifest which we could see would be a Corsair, in fact. Right. So Josh now can flip Elvish Mystic end of turn because it adds two mana off of uh, Nykthos plus its own tapping. So now Josh gets to flip Elvish Mystic, draw Corsair, take a peek at his top card, play Corsair, play land, play Genocide. Corsair only costs one mana. I guess he's just... He just wants to look at an extra card here. I don't. I don't even think you, 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 you need to play Corsair. Basically, you just want to hit Hornet Queen. I think that's the best card to hit right now. Tark is not bad either. No, Atarka is definitely not bad. You want to hit one of the two. Otherwise, the uh, the opposing Atarka is going to be fairly problematic. So, how big is this Hydra for? Um, let's find out in a second here. 12. And, and there's a Hornet Queen. There is a Hornet Queen, which I imagine is going to be the card coming into play. So Josh gets to now... Yeah, it's got to be better than Whisperwood or anything else. Josh has a Nykthos on top, which no, nah, not really what you're looking for. Ooh, Crater's Claws is interesting. It's not lethal. It does 8 damage right now, but Owen potentially has outs. He's got 2 Crater Claws in the deck, so he could Crater's Claws, untap Crater's Claws. How much just... is Josh going to block Atarka with, too? I mean, if he attacks... Yeah, you can attack. Josh has to play around Draconic Roar for sure, so he he's going right. to block with at can least 2 play around Crater's Claws for... I guess it's only a Crater's Claws for six if once the dragon dies. Right. So if you Crater's Claws... Because if but you Crater's still, Claws... damage is relevant. That's all I'm saying. Definitely. You know, if you Crater's Claws first, you, you take Owen down... Or uh, Josh down at, to uh, seven. And then you attack with a Tarka. I guess there's just no reason to attack at that point. You know, Josh is playing around the double uh, Crater's Claws here by just playing a Nykthos to gain three life. He also gets to attack with the Genesis Hydra. He could even send a Wasp or two if he really wants to. The problem is if you send any Wasps in, I guess you lose to a Tarka no matter No, you gain three life. So sending in Hornets could be risky if Owen draws another Atarka. I like playing Nykthos, though, to play around getting Crater's Claws today. Oh, yeah. 
Totally agree. And I definitely like sending in Genesis Hydra. I'm less happy about sending in the, the Wasp tokens just because... I think he just, still loses your Crater's Claws, right? Because he can only soak up... Well, he can soak up five Trample. I think he can soak, or six Trample. He can soak up six, go to eight, and then get Crater's Claws. So I guess you lose your Crater's Claws no matter what. So yeah. the next might as well send in some Wasps. Crater's strange. The question is, do you lose to Draconic Royal Sway? You're at seven, you kill that. Yeah, I would attack with two Hornets, I think, just so I don't lose to Draconic Roar off the top. If he can soak up three damage. Well, Roar kills the Hornet Queen and then puts o Josh to seven, and then Owen tramples over for seven. Right. Obviously, Seder has to chump. All right, so Josh attacked with one Hornet more than you would have. No Crater's Claws off the top, to, or no Draconic Roar off the top to set up that scenario, though. Crater's Claws would have been lethal. Now, yeah. what does Owen do? He can play these Rabble Masters, but the, the tokens just get suicided. He could play, like, at the very least, he could play one just to chump the Genesis Hydra. I don't know what the advantage is of playing the second. I guess you, you, you are worried that you're going to get Atarka, so you kind of want to play both. Otherwise, Josh goes Atarka, kill your two ground blockers. I guess you can just chump with the Sylvan Carry Tid, though, at that point, so... It's going to be tough. It seems like Owen needs to keep Atarka alive so that his Crater's Claws can stay an 8 damage yeah. Crater's Claws instead of a 6. So any trample attack... And it makes later. Draconic Roar a lot, a lot more interesting, too. Yep. So no attack yet, and he doesn't even play the Rabble Masters. So I like... I like playing a Tarka first to, to kill the the Seder, just because that forces Owen to block with the the uh, Sylvan Carry to here. So now Owen trumps with Carry to can attack, can cast Crater's Claws for seven damage. So as long as Josh leaves. There's uh, an Atarka on defense now, though. Yeah. I don't know how Owen wins this now. Yeah. Given the, the Atarka bricking his own Atarka, I just don't see it. Right. And yeah, Owen has figured out the same thing. No outs. Josh Utter late up a game. Trying to take a 2-0 lead in these finals. Owen has led wire to wire. He won week one. He then won week four and week five. Made the finals in six and seven. He's been in first place and in first place by a lot for the entire back half of the season. But Josh Utter Layton with the late charge. So, given what Josh has seen, I think he can put Owen on dragons. Even though, again, it's not 100% clear, I would probably bias towards that. Yeah. And, and if he's going to sideboard similar to what he did last time, you know, we're going to see something like Plummet, Arbor Colossus, potentially Ugin. Owen didn't show any Rabble Masters. So Josh may or may not board in a Hornet Nest, but, you know, Rabble Master's not that good in this matchup anyway, so I wouldn't expect Owen to necessarily want all of his in his deck. Is that why he didn't play them at the end of the game? That may be. He just didn't want to give up information, given that he, he was just he had lost on the board already. Right. So he might not have wanted to show Josh. Maybe he wanted to try to confuse Josh as, you know, Josh did not know that Owen was actually on the Dragon's deck. That's my theory. What does Owen have to try to help with his matchup? Owen has, like Tom, Barrage of Boulders, Roast. Not a whole lot else that looks super exciting. Owen could play Plummet for Josh's Atarka, but I don't know if that's how Owen's, you know, really wants to like, try to set up those games. It just seems like you're just in bad shape if Atarka resolves regardless. And again, Rival Master seems like the weakest card to me, but I, I I could see some other side running. I guess Owen really wants all his flying threats, all his removal, all his mana, so. All right, game two coming up shortly. We're in the, the second match of our best three out of five finals. 
Josh up a match and a game, though. Josh there late and trying to be the surprise champion. Wasn't even clear he could make the finals when the eighth week started, but here he is. Now, how do these draws look? Owens looks a lot better. Owen gets to play Karyatid and then into Thunderbreak with Roast and Draconic Roar up, whereas Josh has kept a hand of three lands Elvish Mystic and three very expensive spells. So if Owen Draconic Roar is the, the Mystic and Josh doesn't draw a couple more mana accelerants, then Josh could be in a lot of trouble here. Now do you Draconic Roar Mystic or play Karyatid? I, I think you want to play Karyatid. Yes, you could stop a Corsair, but you'd rather just play Thunderbreak Especially since you have Roast in to kill a Corsair or Pelucanus that comes out. So I would prefer to just get out the dragon and start attacking. Owen does not have the long game, you know. He he knows he has to finish things out. Yeah, his his long game is bad enough that turn four Atarka wasn't even good enough in game one. Yeah, that was, that was impressive. But if I had to make an early prediction on this game, it's going to be that Owen's in pretty good shape. Turn three Thunderbreak might be good enough. I guess it is a weaker draw from Josh. It's not the best draw from Josh. And, you know, even against a, one of Josh's good draws, Owen on the play with turn three Thunderbreak into double Draconic War Roast is just a very good draw. Josh can even play a Xenagos here if he really wants to. And... First of all, the Thunderbreak can just kill it. Second of all, Draconic Bird does a pretty good job against Planeswalkers. Hmm. Genesis Hydra for two. How lucky uh, are you? Otherwise known as the Shenhar, if you hit. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of Shahar's classic moves. Josh trying to power up a Nykthos here. Draconic Roar takes care of the Mystic. Thunderbreak attacks for four. And you don't even need to Draconic Roar the Genesis Hydra here. It's not really doing much. Yeah, Nykthos is still break even. So that's going to play Xenagos. Yeah, let's see. Owen is a point short of just killing Josh with Draconic Roar plus Storm Breath Dragon. Given that, I think you're a little more tempted to uh, block the token and Draconic Roar away the Hydra and the Xenagos. Makes sense. Yeah, Draconic Roar takes down Hydra. The three damage to Josh is redirected to Xenagos. Oh, and Owen brought in Nissa's to just pressure Josh, just have more more ways to attack here. Interesting. And yeah, Storm Breath joins the attack. Hard to see Josh at her late and top decking his way out of this one. Yeah, I don't think that they're is a card that will do it. Channel, maybe? Get the uh, target <laughs> down early? Something like that. Yeah, not a card legal and standard, for sure. On to game three. Oh, and so what we mentioned earlier is that, uh, yeah, so Pat Cox is getting married the day before Vintage Champs in Philadelphia and Vintage Champs on Sunday, so I'm, I'm not guaranteed to be there yet. I still have to figure things out, but I've got a good shot. I'm going to bring a vintage deck one way or another, and we'll, we'll, we'll see if nice. I end up making it down. <laughs> yeah, the vintage champ setup is pretty sweet this 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 year. It's on a WMCQ weekend. So on Saturday of that weekend, you actually have your choice of playing the WMCQ or playing the Legacy Champs, and then whatever you do on Saturday, or I guess you can go to a friend's wedding that happens to be close by. Then Sunday, Eternal Cham Vintage Champs is set up. Whatever your Saturday preference was, you get to play Vintage Champs on Sunday. Yeah, it's no, a pretty cool weekend that uh, Nick Koss has got put together. Yeah, uh, CardTitan.com actually, you can figure out all the all the details there. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. I know he's got some cool play maths for the people who play in the tournaments. And Nick Koss also runs awesome events. He ran GP Baltimore uh, earlier this year, and everyone I wasn't there, but by all accounts, it was run excellent. So yeah, know. he's good people. Yeah, and I, I'm looking forward to it. I've wanted to play in Vintage Champs for years, actually. The last five years, I've always wanted to go, but it was hard to justify flying to a non-Grand Prix tournament or non-Pro Tour tournament, but this time I'm going to be there, so it's a little harder to refuse. You don't even, probably, no, there isn't even that much to do on Sunday. They, they, they get married on Saturday. Everybody's leaving town. Yeah, exactly. 
Ooh, this is an interesting little set of hands here. Josh with the, again, Elvish Mystic plus all expensive cards hand. This game is just two Genesis Hydra, nothing else. And Owen with the one land elf into Sylvan Carriage hand. We, this could be a, one of the first games where we see the, yeah, the not greatest of draws, though. Owen's draw is quickly turning into a good one because now he gets to play another Elvish Mystic and a Carriage. He's a red source away from casting Storm Breath, and so far Josh hasn't drawn a castable spell. Mm. I guess you play a Genesis Hydra for two here. Sure. If he, if he hits a carry to he's in, he's in a lot better shape. Mystic. Yeah, Mystic's not the one he wants to hit. I, I, I suspect a barrage of boulders is going to be coming down. And Josh is one man away from a Tarka. <laughs> or rather, Owen is one man away from a Tarka. He had a, potentially another turn for a Tarka here. Wow. I think Owen's going to run away with this match. His draws have been so bad up to this point, I almost feel like he deserves it. And so now Josh again has the option of playing a Genesis Hydra for two. It's not particularly exciting to do that. It doesn't actually speed up the Hornet Queen. You might as well wait one turn and try to do it for three. So Owen kills Genesis Hydra. Josh gets... Josh can win this game. It is, it's going to be tough, but Josh yeah. can untap, play a Genesis Hydra for three. If he hits a Mana Accelerant, he gets to play a Hornet Queen after while at eight life against a Tarka and Stormbreath Dragon. It's not, <laughs> it's not a good position, but it's not it's not game over. Okay. And, th and that's Hydra for one. three rather than Polychronos? Oh, yeah, because you need to play a Hornet Queen a turn earlier than normal. And Owen actually doesn't have a red mana to cast uh, Stormbreath yet, so... Josh needs to hit Sylvan Carriage, or Owen's probably going to roast the Man Accelerant. Survey says Sylvan Carriage. <laughs> All right. Really? We, we got ourselves a game, I guess. Wow. And this, Owen hit the red. Oh, there's the red source. So, yeah, this is going to be. Th 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 that is exactly what Josh did not want to see. Owen hits Josh down to seven. Josh then goes to six to play Hornet Queen. Uh, it's not game over. It's not. It's not great, but it's not game over. So Owen wants gets to get an additional point in by attacking with the elf. <laughs> so let's see. Can because oh, I guess Owen can't monstrous if he does that. I'm trying to see if Owen can monstrous could takes Josh to four. He blocks that. He blocks the storm breath with one wasp. Acharka gets blocked with five power. Put Josh to one. So I think if Owen draws an untapped land, he can actually monstrous and attack for the win. How about another Storm Breath Dragon? Uh, that actually doesn't do it. He can go Wasp, Wasp, take Atarka down to one if he wants, block. Or or maybe Atarka down to, to two and then Elvish Mystic down to one. Does it make any sense to roast the Genesis Hydra and clear a path for Elvish Mystic? Or you want to spend your mana monstrousing. Wait, so he doesn't you have... He didn't draw the land for monstrous, right? No, he can't monstrous and attack with both mystics. You send in a Tarka to deal as much damage as possible, and you're trying to mon and then you get to. So now Josh has to worry about getting Storm Breath for three during his draw step. So, you want you need to block a Tarka with four tough, five toughness, six toughness. You need to maybe block a Tarka with everything, or you're just dead to Storm Breath. So, yeah, that sounds right. So, and then Owen could not have attacked with the Mystics and done that. So, yeah, you have to, if you block a Tarka with everything, you take two down to four, and then Owen gets to Storm Breath you down to one. I think that's, given the board, I mean, Josh has all this information, I think that is what you have to do. Alternately, Josh could block with one less and just hope to draw, like if he sided in a Plummet, he could hope <laughs> to draw a Plummet on his draw step here. He has to draw an instant. Not many instants in the Devotion deck, are there? No. If Josh blocks like this, he has to draw an instant to not die. So now he's blocking to, to not die to a Storm Breath. And Owen has essentially effectively cleared a path for Storm Breath next turn. Yeah. Right now, Owen's got two lethal Storm Breaths. So Josh has to, like, draw another Hornet Queen, get hit down to one. Then, Josh, then Owen plays another Storm Breath and sets up Monstrous again in, in two turns. <laughs> Well, Josh has more Hornet Queens to draw, but this is going to be a pretty tough game for him to win if he doesn't. 
Tarka is an okay draw. Yeah, so Tarka also also does some things. Rado Claw Mystic does not look like he's going to get it done. Here's the Monstrous. This will drop Josh down to one. And then what does Josh do about the Monstrous Storm Breath Dragon? <laughs> or the non monstrous one. <laughs> yeah, the one he, he's dead to the one he knows about. And there's another one waiting in the wings, so... Looks like Owen Turtenwald is going to even our series at one match apiece. Man, this is the matchup I thought was looked the worst of all those sets here. I think, you know, Josh is the most favored in this matchup, whereas the other ones look pretty even to me. Though I could see the Obs on Aggro deck potentially being good against Heroic. Well, I thought actually, let's go find out. Yeah, I thought Owen's Obs on deck was potentially ahead, but here the Red Green Dragons deck defeated Devotion, which was not 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 something we saw last week. No, Owen played it well. Deck finally gave him a good draw right there at the end. And uh, Owen evens things up. One match apiece. Now we're going to play best two out of three for the standard Super League Finals. We're going to play one match with their seed decks and then the mind games. We get at least one match of the ghost noodle thinking process. Uh, we're going to take a real quick break. We will be back momentarily with match number three. All tied up, getting pretty good. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> 